Nearly everyone in the world has some mental image of ancient Greece, whether it be mythological creatures, philosophy, epic stories, stone ruins, or even just Mediterranean islands. One of, if not the most famous Greek of them all is Alexander the Great, known for his expansive conquests and borderline egotistical city naming practices. It has always amazed me, both the speed of his conquest and just how quickly all of it fell apart. Alexander defeated the Persians in 330 BCE, only seven years before he died. Yeah, 70 years seems long now, but that's absolutely nothing in the grand scale of history. Given such a short amount of time the Greeks had in Persia, what exactly happened during and after their control of the region? Before Alexander came knocking on the door, Persia was under the control of the local Persians themselves, specifically the Achaemenids. The empire came into fruition in the middle of the 6th century BC and eventually acquired most of the surrounding area, funny enough resembling the borders of what would eventually become Alexander's empire. Most in Persia were Zoroastrians, following the teachings of Zoroaster, a Persian prophet who lived between two and three thousand years ago. While nearly all Persian emperors, including several noteworthy figures like Cyrus the Great were Zoroastrian, they were greatly accepting and tolerant of other beliefs. They were also constructors, who built several important roads throughout their empire, which subsequently connected more and more of the world together. In short, they were pretty important, and had a sizable impact on the known world until their unfortunate end. Alexander the Great swept through the region during his ambitious conquests, eventually annexing all of Persia by 330 BCE. While Alexander is understandably perceived as an ambitious and vigorous conqueror of foreign lands, his administration of the region doesn't share the same sense of brutality. The territories which Alexander conquered were left to be governed by those who preceded him, rather than them being ousted and replaced with a Greek administrator. The religious tolerance of the Persians didn't go away with them either. Alexander was comparatively tolerant. He even had the tomb of Cyrus the Great, the infamous Zoroastrian Persian ruler, fully restored after it was sacked following his conquest of the region. The rest of Alexander's short campaign in the region mostly consisted of the establishment of new cities in his name, as well as fortifications and defenses, which protected travelers and locals alike from barbarian attacks. Alexander's die-hard approach to conquering the world was cut short after he returned to the city of Babylon and died in 323 BCE, leaving his empire in the hands of his highest commanders. Shortly following his untimely death, Alexander's empire was split into several major regions, each one governed by one of his commanders. Seleucus was one of his generals and the recipient of the area which included Persia during the partition. The empire, named in his likeness, would continue to prevail for three centuries. The Hellenization of the region, which began under Alexander, continued under the Seleucids. However, they were never nearly as ambitious as he was. The Greek language itself was spread all over Persia and as far as the Indus Valley in Afghanistan, written on statues and spoken by officials. The Seleucids continued to teach about the Greek gods throughout Persia, something which Alexander had done before. However, it's a lot harder to give the Seleucids the name tolerant than it was for someone like Alexander. Greek culture was at the top of the hierarchical pyramid, especially in the major cities. One king by the name of Antiochus IV imposed strict orders onto the Jewish citizens of Jerusalem effectively forcing them to break Jewish customs and law. The later years of the empire could be summed up with nearly any antonym to unity. It eventually broke down and lost large amounts of more remote territory. The Seleucids came to an end at the hands of the Romans in 64 BCE. The effects of Hellenization in Persia are harder to pinpoint than I thought they would have been. Most of the changes were brought on by Alexander. Most of the civic and fortification construction and the spread of the Greek culture along with its religion and education. It's impressive in the least that he was able to do all of this in such a short amount of time, and his apparent respect for the diverse religion and customs of Persia is admirable. However, the Seleucids ruled for much longer and didn't seem to share Alexander's levels of ambition for the development of the region. Had they been, or if Alexander lived longer than he did, Persia may have been a very different region of the world.